Yes, I am. All right. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in church. And we're looking at part number two of the great shepherd. We looked at the good shepherd in Psalm 22. Now we're looking at the great shepherd in Psalm chapter number 23. And we're moving along really quickly through this psalm. We're going to be looking at the first part of verse number one once again tonight. And so just that first half, amen. And uh, Hebrews chapter number 13, verses 20 and 21, the Bible says, Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever, amen. And so we see here the great shepherd in Psalm chapter number 23, the shepherd that leads the sheep. And so we see in verse number one, if you're there with me, say amen. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And if you can say amen right there, you ought to. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord for how long? Amen. You better enjoy it down here because you're going to be there forever up there. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. And so as we look at this, the Lord Jesus Christ is our great shepherd. And can you say that Jesus is your shepherd? We looked last week at the position and the possession of the shepherd. And notice with me this week, the sheep. One of the other things that we need to understand and have a good grasp of in order to really truly appreciate Psalm chapter number 23, one of the great, uh, as, as, uh, uh, as I mentioned last week, as uh, Charles Spurgeon mentioned, the pearl of the Psalms, Psalm chapter number 23, as we look at this and truly to order to really appreciate, man alive, come on tongue, get with it. In order to really appreciate this Psalm, we really need to understand some things before we really dive into it too deeply. And we looked at the Lord as the shepherd last week. We looked at that shepherd last week. And this week, I want to take a look at the sheep. And so we're really not going to be digging into this. This passage, so to speak, but we're just going to be looking at sheep and what the Bible has to say a little bit about this, and just to kind of give us a better appreciation as we jump into this psalm, why this psalm is so amazing. And so as we look at this, the first thing I want you to notice with me is, number one, the nature of sheep, the nature of sheep. Let's pray. Father, we sure do love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for the amazing power of God. We thank you so much that, God, you're awesome. You you're, are amazing and powerful and magnificent and wonderful. God, you, you're just incredible. Everything that you've done for us, all that you've given to us. Lord, the wonderful gift of eternal life and all that pertains to the spiritual blessings of life. What a tremendous gift. God, you are awesome and powerful. And Lord, just for that alone, we should spend day and night praising you. God, you're so awesome. And Father, I pray now that you'd fill me, use me, guide, direct my words and my thoughts. Lord, I pray you'd fill me as I, I preach your word tonight. And Lord, I pray, dear God, that you'd help each one of us to have an open heart and mind to receive what you have for us. Lord, work and move. Help us to understand how precious it is to be led of you. God, that you care so much about us that you want to guide and direct our life. Not to whip us along or drive us along like cattle, but to lead us like sheep. Thank you so much for that. We love you. We praise you. We thank you for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. The power of his blood we plead. Amen. And so we see the nature of sheep. Amen. The first thing I want you to notice about this, A, the bad characteristics the bad characteristics of sheep. And I just want to get into this. And these are the characteristics of sheep. And uh, they make them look all pretty and cute. You know, they got these little stuffed animals and they're pretty white, little sheep and fluffy and all that. Uh, they're not that way. And so anyways, um, the characteristics of sheep. And I'm just going to give you a list of characteristics. And the first thing right off the bat is number one, sheep 
are dumb. They're dumb, amen. Sheep are dumb. They're a dumb animal. Not only are they dumb, but they're also stubborn. Sheep are stubborn. They're a stubborn animal. And not only are they dumb and they're stubborn, but you know what else they are? They are defenseless. Sheep are defenseless. Man, I'm telling you what, they, they are just defenseless. They cannot defend themselves. They have to be defended. Uh, uh, they have uh, no sense of direction. They're without any sense of direction. When a sheep, hey, listen, when they head off on their own, they get lost, okay? That's the, that's the truth of it. And not only do they not have a sense of direction, but you think that they would because they are prone to wander, they're prone to wander. They're, they don't have a good sense of direction. They're defenseless. They're stubborn, and they're dumb. So far, they're a really great animal, amen? And so as we look at this, not only that, they're slow to recognize danger. And so they're not real sharp. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they're just not. They're, they're just not real perceptive of what's going on around them. So they don't pick up on danger quickly. And so, and, and uh, these things, and not only that, but they're, they're nervous and uneasy animals. You want to know why? Because they do know they're defenseless. And so they understand this. They're nervous and uneasy, and they're easily excitable and frightened. And so you can get them in a panic real quick. You can get them nervous and in a panic real quick just by doing some things. And so not only that, lastly, they're just plain dirty. They're a stinky, dirty animal. <laughs> they could care less about getting clean. <laughs> and so as we look at this, we see this. We see some bad characteristics here of sheep. And so as we're looking at the nature of sheep, that, those characteristics basically describe the nature of a sheep. They're not intelligent. They're stubborn. They're defenseless. They're without sense of direction. They're prone to wander, even though they don't know the good sense of direction. They don't know up from down or left from right. Slow to recognize danger. Nervous and uneasy. And easily excitable and frightened. And lastly, they are dirty. Isaiah chapter number 53, go there with me, Isaiah chapter number 53, Isaiah chapter number 53, I want you to see this, we looked at this verse last week, I think, Isaiah chapter number 53, I want you to see verse number 7, uh, actually, uh, yeah, verse number 7, I want you to see this, I want you to see that first characteristic I gave you was what? Dumb. <laughs> Look at this now in verse number 7. He was oppressed and he was aff afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the what? Slaughter. Slaughter. And as a sheep before her shearers is what? Dumb. So the Bible describes a sheep before his shearers as what? Dumb. And so sheep are dumb. And so as we look at this, we see in this passage, and so he opened out his mouth. Now we know that's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, but the, the dumb part is not talking about Jesus, amen. It's talking about he just kept his mouth shut, just like a dumb sheep doesn't say a thing. Are you with me? And so as we look at this and we see in this passage in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. We see in this passage, obviously, it's talking about shepherd and sheep. And so we see here the characteristics, and they're just not good. They're bad characteristics. But I want you to notice not only the bad characteristics, but I want you to see the biblical comparison. The biblical comparison. Now look at verse number 6 of Isaiah chapter number 53. Look at verse number 6. Look at what it says. If you're still there, say Amen. It says, all we like what? Sheep, Sheep have gone what? Astray. Astray. Amen. And so in one of those characteristics, they're without defense and they're prone to wander. Just like that song, Come Thou Fountain, prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. And so as we look at this and we see in this passage, the biblical comparison is, is that God compares us to sheep. He compares us to sheep. And so as we look at this biblical comparison, all we like sheep have gone astray. And so the biblical comparison is, is, is that the children of God, and not just the children of God, but all people, all we like sheep have gone astray. And so as we look at this, God compares people to sheep.
And so, and, and in the next passage, when he's talking about himself being quiet, he says, he very clearly says that sheep are dumb. And so as we jump into this biblical comparison, go to Psalm 119, 176. Psalm 119, 176. Psalm 119, 176. Hmm. <clears throat> Psalm 119, verse 176. Look at it with me. I have gone astray like a what? Lost sheep. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. And so we see in that passage, we are compared once again to lost sheep. And so all we like sheep have gone astray. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. And I could go to several of the passages. You know, when David made the statement, the Lord is my shepherd, he understood what he was saying. He was understood as a shepherd himself having shepherded sheep. He understood about sheep. He knew their, their traits. He knew their characteristics. He knew that they were dumb, stubborn, defenseless, without a sense of direction, prone to wander, slow to recognize danger, nervous and uneasy, easily excitable and frightened, and lastly, dirty. He understood that about sheep. Are you with me? And he said, the Lord is my shepherd. And he wasn't complimenting himself. He understood what that meant. And you know, David many times throughout the years did what? From God. Wandered off. They are prone to wander. And he did do that. He did that several times throughout his life. And a couple of those times we read there in 2 Samuel, one with Bathsheba and the other uh, towards the end of there where he has the, the children of Israel numbered, knowing that God said, don't do it. And he did it anyways, even when Joab uh, uh, tried to warn him and told him not to do it. And so as we look at this and we see in this passage the biblical comparison. Uh, and so as we look at this, if we are truly to appreciate this psalm, we must be humble enough to be able to recognize that we too are like sheep, that we must compare ourselves and recognize that a lot of those characteristics are the same. And so as we look at this, we see a biblical comparison. We see bad characteristics, but also about the nature of sheep. We see the biblical truth, the biblical truth. Go to Psalm 119 with me, Psalm 119, 160, Psalm 119, 160. Psalm 119, 160, verse 160. Look at what it says. Thy word is what? From the beginning, and every one of thy righteous what? Judgments endureth forever. Now, God made a judgment in the Bible that we are like sheep. Are you with me? And the Bible says his word is true from the beginning. And I'm here to tell you, from the beginning to the ending, it's all true. Psalm 119, verse 138, thy testimony that thou hast commanded are righteous and very faithful. Proverbs chapter number 30, verse number five, every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. In 2 Timothy 3, 16, all scripture is given by inspiration and is what? profitable. Amen. It's profitable. And the fact that God compares us to sheep is very profitable for us. Amen. And the sooner that we recognize Amen. that we are like helpless, dumb, stubborn, defenseless, without a sense of direction, prone to wander, slow to recognize danger, nervous and uneasy, and easily excitable and frightened, and lastly, dirty. You say, I'm a clean person. I'm not talking about your physical body. 
I'm talking about your spiritual body. Biblical comparison and biblical truth. God's comparison is a bullseye. Just take a look around at our nation. Just look at what's going on in our country. A country that has forsaken God and wandered away. And now our country proclaims that a man can decide to identify as a woman and that people should call them Miss. Are you with me? I'm thinking the country's kind of like a dumb sheep. Amen? Filthy, wandering, lost, and undone. And boy, I'm telling you, it's crazy what we see going on in our society today, the nature of sheep. And so as we look at this, the sooner we come to the recognition of what we really, God compares us to for a reason, the more we'll understand how desperately we need him. So we see the nature of sheep, but also secondly, as a point to that, the necessity of sheep, the necessity of sheep. The Lord, David recognized his need. The Lord is my shepherd. First Peter, uh, uh, turn to First Peter chapter number two. First Peter chapter number two. Notice David did not say the Lord is a shepherd, the Lord is the shepherd, or even the Lord is our shepherd. He said the Lord is my shepherd. It's a personal psalm. And one of the great things about the book of Psalms in Psalm 23, one of the great things about it is it becomes very personal. And boy, it ought to be something that should be personal. So many times this passage is, is known. It's read at funerals. It's used to comfort in times of sorrow. And it's used in all of these times, in times of death and in times of sorrow, in times of trouble. It's used in that way. And so sadly, so many people don't even understand a lot of what it means. The Lord is my shepherd. And listen... The first thing under the necessity of sheep is what? They need a shepherd. They need a shepherd. Everybody needs a shepherd. You, hey, listen, you are not smart enough to make decisions for yourself. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. Neither am I. <laughs> are you with me? We need Jesus in our life. We need the Word of God and the amazing amount of principles that he has put on every topic. And it gives us that guidance. And listen, can you hear his voice? It's right here. This is the voice of the shepherd. Listen, the Lord is my shepherd. And so as we look at this, David knew he needed a shepherd. First Peter chapter number 2, look at verse number 25 with me. For ye were as sheep going what? But are now returned unto the shepherd and what? Bishop of your souls. That shepherd that leads, that bishop that pastors and guides and directs. Listen, we need a shepherd, and sheep have to have a shepherd. What a wonderful day when I recognized in my life that I was a dumb sheep that had gone astray and was lost. And when I realized there was a shepherd that was searching for me. It was January 6, 2000, uh, January 11, 2006, at 12.35 p.m., at Providence Baptist College, when I knelt down and accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, when I realized that I needed that good shepherd who gave his life for the sheep, greatest day of my life, greatest day of my life, when I begin to follow the shepherd. John chapter number 10, verse number 11, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. All people are sheep, but not all people are the sheep of his pasture. Are you with me? They're not all a part of his flock. Turn over to John chapter number 10 with me. John chapter number 10. I love this passage. John chapter number 10. This is great stuff from a great shepherd.
Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. So somebody who thinks that they got in because they're doing good works, hey, listen, they're not in, amen. They're a goat amongst the sheep. That's what they are. Listen, somebody who thinks they're in because, hey, listen, because they got the right personality or because their family member was a preacher or, or something along those lines or because they've got a certain blood type or because their eyes are a certain color, I'm here to tell you something right now. If there was a certain color, I would definitely be blue. And so anyways, but listen, <laughs> listen to me. There's only one way in, and it's through the door. There's no other way. And so when it says, he that entereth in not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by what? Name. And leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his what. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. You know how I know when, when people aren't really in tune with Solid Rock Baptist Church? You want to know how I know that? Because physically, I'm the voice of the shepherd in our church. And when people are telling me they're listening to all kinds of other preachers online, I know they're not in tune with Solid Rock Baptist Church. And they have more of a tendency to listen to some other preacher than they do their preacher. Can I get a witness? And so as we look at this and we see this, man, I'm telling you right now, that's an important thing to recognize whether you're really following the shepherd or not. And I'm not against listening to other preachers and stuff like that and getting a good message here and there. But if that's where you're getting your food at and your, and your sustenance from and all of those kind of things, something is wrong. And your heart's not where it's supposed to be. I don't know about you, but this is your flock. Amen? Amen? And this is where you come to be fed. And I don't know how many times I've had people tell me, I'm just not getting fed, preacher. And I'm like, you're not getting fed? How in the world can you not be getting fed? I mean, I'm, I'm last I checked, the food we eat is the bread of the Word of God. Yeah. And there's a lot of word coming out in this place. And so regardless, hey, listen, if I just got up here and read the Bible, I'd be doing better than most preachers do in their churches because they spend more time telling personal stories than they do the Bible. Hmm. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. Can I get a witness right there? And shall go in and out and find what? Pasture, amen. Going to be fed. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not what? Amen. I'm not even preaching that point yet. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more what? Abundantly. Amen. Man, I'm telling you what, the closer I get to God, the more abundant my life seems to be. And I'm not talking about having better cars and trucks and houses and all kinds of money. I'm talking about living large in Jesus. Amen. Man, it's good to be saved. Hallelujah. Man, you know what? It is just nice to know that no matter what, I'm going to heaven someday. It is nice to know that I've got a God that loves me and cares about me and has put a hedge of protection about me. Amen. And man, we get to live good, as Mrs. Frost had said earlier. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the what? But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd whose own the sheep are not, Seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth them. 
You go on down through there, you see some great stuff. Look at verse number 15 with me. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the what? And I lay down my life for the what? Look at verse number 17. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might do what? Take it again. Death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. Right there in that passage. First Corinthians chapter number 15. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory that I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Christ Christ is risen again. He's my Savior. He's my God. And He is qualified to lead my life. Amen. Is the Lord your shepherd? And when I say that, I'm not just talking about salvation. I'm talking about, is He leading your life? Lo, in the grave He lay. Jesus, my Savior, Waiting the coming day, Jesus my Lord. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph for his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain. He lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose. Hallelujah, Christ arose. We've got a risen Savior. Amen. He is alive and well. Amen. And I'm here to tell you something right now. The Lord is my shepherd. Amen. The Lord's my shepherd. Man, I'm talking the God of heaven and earth, the creator of all the universe. And you know what I found? When I just do and follow and listen and hear and keep his voice in my earshot, man, everything that he said he would do, he does. Everywhere he leads me, I'm okay. No matter which way it is, no matter how it works out, God is doing good by Jim Frost. We've got an awesome God, amen? Not only do sheep need a shepherd, but you know what else sheep need? Sheep need sheep. Sheep need sheep. Are you with me? I'm here to tell you something right now. You're not going to find a whole lot of happy sheep that are all by themselves. Sheep need other sheep. You'll notice, I understand that the sheep are prone to wander and all of that other stuff, but when the shepherd's calling, you know what those sheep do? They stay right close to each other. Have you ever noticed when they're herding them and stuff like that, not herding them, when they're, when they're leading them? Now, when we were in Germany, we got to see uh, uh, sheep and shepherds when we went through one of the towns. You remember that? There was this one place, there was a flock of sheep, and, and sometimes we'd have to stop because the dumb sheep would be right in the middle of the road. And so anyways, when he would be taking them over to the other side of the road to another pasture, and boy, those sheep would be flocked right in. Almost every one of them would be right tight, and they'd just be right next to each other, all hurled up. It was pretty a neat thing to see and to hear that shepherd do his yodel thing, whatever he did, man, it was, it was neat to hear. And boy, those sheep would come hauling across there and he'd give them a hold on. And as soon as he'd speak, man, you'd see him pick it up a little bit and pick it up a little bit and they'd follow him. Man, it's amazing. It is just so cool to see. And so as we look at this, you know, and, and it's awesome you know, when they're out in the field and, and the shepherd brings out some special food or something like that, I was reading this, and they had a, a hauler, and boy, those sheep would come a-hauling. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, they knew the shepherd's voice. It's an incredible thing. And you know what else? They need sheep. Sheep need sheep. A flock is not going to grow 
without multiple sheep. Amen. Can I get a witness? And you know what? Every Christian needs their church. Listen, have you admitted to yourself your true nature? I have no doubts about anybody's salvation in this room tonight. But being saved and being humble are two different things. Do you know your true nature? And are you willing to admit it that, hey, look, navigating this life on my own, if you recall back before you got saved, you probably weren't doing too good of a job of it. Let's be honest. I know I wasn't. Even when I thought I had it going on, I look back at that time now and I'm like, oh, boy, what a mess. Are you with me? It wasn't until I started applying this book in my life and doing what God said that God began to do things in, 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 a, in an amazing way. And listen, there's times that Jim Frost, i been preaching here Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. There's times that, man, and, and, and more often than I'd like to admit, I find myself, well, how did I get out here by my, where did the other sheep go? What in the world? Ma! Ma! <laughs> Ma! Anybody else out there? <laughs> Are you with me? And man, all of a sudden, it's like kind of scary and frightening. And man, I need to get back to the flock. The sad thing is, you get the bond out there too loud, a wolf will happen to find you. Man, listen to me. You know what? Just like it says in, uh, what is that, Numbers 32, 23 or 23, 32? 32, 23, I believe it is. Behold, if you will not do so, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. There's no such thing as a hidden sin. Listen, there's no such thing. It will be revealed. And so that alone ought to be a, a, a thing of fright for you that would keep you to do right. Sheep need sheep, and sheep need a shepherd. And the nature of sheep, well, God uses the sheep as an example to let us know what we're really like. And we need a shepherd. We need protection. Listen. <laughs> what did, Even Jesus gave the example in the, in the wilderness when he was fasting 40 days and 40 nights, and at the end of that, Satan tempted him. What did he do? Did he strike him down with power from on high? Did he, did he send the Holy Spirit of God to attack him? He simply quoted the Lord is my shepherd. This is your protection. You don't protect you. You don't protect you. This protects you. Amen. Are you with me? You want to keep Satan away? This book. Having struggles with Satan? You ain't got enough book. Are you with me? Come on. Ain't got enough book in your home. I ain't got enough Bible around you. You got too many other things going on and not enough book. Can I get a witness? Yeah. And if you think Satan's not trying to attack you, when you get to heaven, talk to Job about that. Satan was trying to get to him, but God had a hedge about him. I can't get to him. You've got a hedge about him. I wonder what that hedge was made of. Hmm. Probably the word of God. Are you with me? You think it was some kind of green hedge that was growing around you? <laughs> no. God's word. <laughs> and so as we look at this, sheep need sheep. And sheep need a shepherd. Just a simple thought tonight. And you know what? We have a risen Savior. He's alive and well. And you know what? He doesn't want to be left on the cross in your life. He wants to be alive and well working in your life. 
take up your cross and what? Everyone standing, every head bowed, every eye closed. The nature of sheep and the necessity of sheep. Sheep desperately need a shepherd and sheep need sheep. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. I pray you bless now the invitation. In Jesus' precious holy name we pray. The power of his blood we plead. Amen. If God spoke to your heart tonight, would you slip your hand up as a testimony to heaven? God sees those hands. You can put them down. Piano's playing. If you need to come, why don't you come? If the Lord's leading, you come on. Let the Lord lead. Amen. Let the Lord lead. God spoke to your heart, amen. Don't you resist the Spirit of God. And if God didn't speak to your heart, you ought to come to the pulpit and talk to God about having Him speak to your heart. That's the worst thing. I hear my Savior calling, amen. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them.